Hey everyone, the Salamander Man here back with another video. And in this video, I want to do something just a little different and actually discuss my Eastern Newt enclosure. Because while I can't create a new enclosure and show you all the process on how to actually create this setup, I do want to discuss it and go over some details that I feel like would provide a lot of great information for anyone choosing to keep these wonderful animals. Now this enclosure that I have happens to be the most mature setup out of the rest of them. And the animals that I have in here, I've had them for about four years now and they're all doing absolutely fantastic. So I want to share some of these details because I'm hoping it would provide some more insight if you choose to keep an animal like this. And you can see right here I've got some really nice lush dense plant growth with this java moss. It's just spreading out further into the tank. And I may trim that back a little more if it does grow a little bit further out, but I've got plenty of open space over here. And all of my adults are gathered like this because they are eating. I just dropped in some frozen bloodworms. But I wanna share some other details such as the plants, the substrate, the tank size, and some of the other materials used, the lighting, the position of the enclosure in my garage has made a huge difference. So I'm gonna go over some of these things and Hopefully it can help you build your own enclosure if you do choose to keep an Easter Newt. Also, I've seen some other videos that don't provide accurate information when it comes to keeping these animals. So I'm hoping in showing these details, while I've provided my own care guides, I think just showing the current setup will help a lot more as well. So I think one of the most important details to note here is exactly which species I have in this enclosure and which stage of life it's in. Because I've seen plenty of comments asking about which newt they may have found, being unsure of the species, and which stage of life it may be in, because these are very important details when keeping any animal. But the Easter newt is a very complex species. It goes through three different life stages, and that is very important to understand when keeping this animal so we can set up the enclosure correctly. So with that said, I'm currently keeping the Eastern Newt in this 55 gallon enclosure. And I am specifically keeping the aquatic adult, which is very important to differentiate from the red eft, which is a completely terrestrial stage of life. The red eft is very well known for being a bright, vivid orange to red coloration. And over a few years or so in the wild, and in captivity, it will lose that orange to red coloration and turn greenish olive in coloration, like you see with my adults here, where they will soon go back into the water and live an aquatic lifestyle. And now that we've established that the Eastern Newt adult requires an aquatic habitat, you can see that I've set up my whole enclosure in a way where it should closely mimic their habitat in the wild. So this is a mostly aquatic setup here with very little land, but you can see I have this spider wood here sticking out of the water just a little bit and I've got some nice java moss growing on the surface as well. And they can rest on land occasionally if they want to, but they will primarily be living in the water, eating in the water, and they breed in the water. As I mentioned earlier, I have a 55 gallon enclosure with eight individual newts in this enclosure and the size of your enclosure depends on the species that you plan on keeping and how many you plan on keeping as well eastern newts do not grow to a very large size so all eight individuals can be kept comfortably with one another in this enclosure i've also set this up in a way where it should mimic loosely a stream or pond like environment I even have an air hose in here but you can see I have some really nice dense plant growth as I just mentioned and a really small land portion I'm using spider wood for the land area and the java moss in the water will grow really nicely and of course it'll grow on the wood as well even outside of the water so it can present some really nice visual effects the java moss also provides security for the newts and it's also a really great egg laying surface. And since eastern newts live in ponds, streams, and brooks in the wild, they come from habitats that have 
really dense plant growth and they will definitely appreciate a heavily planted tank. Positioning is important too because I've actually placed my tank right by the window so I also get some sunlight and that provides a lot of great benefits to the plants along with the LED light that I have here but in the corner over here by the window I also have some java moss that has actually turned into a floating mass of algae and even some crystal wort that I had put in here as well before it's all just combined into one lush green floating mass that my newts often hang out on so with this really nice plant growth that I have going on and the positioning of the spider wood here you can see how the wood even intertwines underneath the water through the plants and above the water there's plenty of hiding areas if the newts choose to hide for any reason and it just provides a nice secure and natural setup for these animals the substrate used for this enclosure is, of course, the aquatic soil that I often use for my other enclosures, and a slight mixture of sand to loosely mimic a stream-like environment. And then you can see the other side of the tank is open and provides enough space for me to feed the animals as well. Now, I always opt towards using aquatic soil, even though it can be pricey. Aquatic soil provides a lot of benefits for my plants. It has a lot of nutrients, unlike other substrates, and it's safe for the newts and salamanders. It doesn't pose an immediate choking hazard, unlike gravel, which can also cause impaction if swallowed. And if the newts do swallow some of the soil, it should be able to pass through safely as well. I've also been asked about the use of fertilizers, and I don't use any fertilizers or CO2 in my setups at all. Just the use of aquatic soil on its own has been really great for me. I've had tons of great plant growth just using that. And I've also read on various websites that the use of CO2 especially and possibly some fertilizers could actually be harmful to the health of your newt. So it's not a risk that I want to experiment with especially when the setups and techniques that I have been utilizing have kept my animals healthy for many years now. So I see no reason to experiment really too much further when the goal is to keep my animals healthy and happy. And I've been doing exactly that while achieving a natural setup for their enclosure. And it's not to say that I wouldn't try any new setups or new techniques eventually. It's just that what I have been doing has worked tremendously well for me. So anything a little different that I am unsure of is gonna just take a little more research before I attempt anything really out of the ordinary. And so one last thing that I wanna go over really quickly before I wrap up the video, you may have noticed that I'm not using a filter in this enclosure, I'm using an air hose. And the air hose is just aerating the water and providing some water flow that the newts may encounter in their natural habitat. So I've really gone out of my way to make this setup as natural as possible. And the dense plant growth that I have is providing plenty of chemical filtration and aiding in keeping up with the water quality. All right, I'm gonna wrap up the video here. I wanted to do a detailed explanation of my enclosure for the Eastern Newt because while I can't create a new setup at the moment, I'm hoping that the information in this video can act as a supplement to the care guide that I made a while back as well and just provide even more details when keeping this animal. I've seen too many videos that unfortunately don't differentiate the complexities of this species, one of the biggest details being that these animals go through three different life stages and knowing those details alone make a big difference in how you keep this animal. As an example, the red F stage will need a completely terrestrial setup. I've seen plenty of half land, half water setups and this is just not appropriate for that stage of life. It poses a huge risk of drowning for the red F and so this type of setup really can't be used. Whereas the aquatic adult, as seen in the video here, they need a mostly aquatic setup because they will be spending most of their time in the water and occasionally rest on land. With all that said, these setups really don't have to be as complex as 
the ones that you see in my videos. There are much more simplistic ways of keeping these animals that are still effective. Bare bottom tanks work very well, but these animals still do appreciate some security so that they can hide, and plants really do accomplish that very well. And I just like going the extra mile of making my setups seem much more natural. And so covering the current setup for my Eastern Newts, I hope I was able to provide some more hands-on information and some insight on how to keep these animals, why I keep them the way that I do, how I set up the enclosure, and just the details that are catered to my animals. And just to provide some more information to anyone that may be uncertain on how to set up the enclosure and why they are set up the way that they are. I'll also leave the link to my other videos like the care guide and my red eft setup i'll leave those in the description so check that out and that way you can get some more information and you can really see the differences between these setups and why they are set up the way that they are and so with that i'll end the video here and i hope you all enjoyed the video and if you did enjoy the video please remember to leave a like share comment down below let me know what you thought of my current setup and of course please subscribe your support is very much appreciated and until next time everyone i am the salamander man